And here we are again in Kerbal Space Program. Bill, Bob, and Jeb are ready to perform their separate missions. So I guess Jeb is going to be the one to go in EVA and collect some low-altitude science, whatever we can get. Let's get a crew report. 35 science. Cool. Transmit that data. And let's get some more experiments going over here. Barometer, I don't think we'll do anything right now. Nope. Gravity should. Yep, 140. Cool, that's pretty good. Alright, should have another one around here somewhere. I think. Hmm, maybe we don't. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh well. What else? We've got some experiments. Can we experiment up here? Nope. Probably dip into the atmosphere and do the experiment there. Then again, we've got them here. But it'll save us time. And we'll dip in, I guess. Observe the goo. 175 science. Alright. I'm liking that. Observe the mystery goo. Mm-hmm. 70 science ain't bad. It's not so bad. Um, let's observe something off of here as well. I'm sure I got another experiment on here that I can use. Not the seismic, that's for sure. Temperature, maybe? Nice. Okay. So, we gotta get temperature, we gotta get a few other things, we gotta get EVA report. Okay, so that's the science, but we need to do that at some point a little later on, sadly. Should be able to land in here still, though. And that's the idea. Land in there. So either one of these is good to go. Bill, you're going to be the first EVA. Land yourself on a duna. Bob, it is time to go. Okay. Well, my Kerbal friend, it's time for us to engage our little descent here. Now, we are headed here. So let's create a node not too far down. Hopefully that'll be enough. I don't think it will be. I think we're going to run into some problems here. But still. Should be okay. Alright, let's get ourselves aligned upon the negative vector. And 
and get gear. Yeah, I guess gear can come later. Let's be fair to the gear. Don't want to damage it too much. Okay, so we're entering a bit of atmosphere. I guess I might as well just deploy all the shoots now. A little bit more atmosphere. Got plenty of electrical charge, so I think we can just retract these for now. Now we see how well those shoots work. Oof, getting pretty low though. apparently. Which is great. Oh, there we go. There we go. Well, it's about freaking time. To bounce this sucker around, I think. Shouldn't be too far away from it, though. It's hard to tell. Hmm. I think it might be over here. This is a problem. I think I will be putting the rover over here. So for now, Bill, um, we're going to set up shop. Let's extend some panels. Let's do some more science. Yeah. This is a slight design flaw. Oh well. No way. Oh man, that sucks. Well, butts. I broke a thing. Now it's broken. Hmm. Oh well. We did it in the name of science. That's what counts. 
All right, buddy. For now, you've done your job. You will await your rover. We'll bring some more science along with that. Because science. And take that. Got to make sure we stay safe from things that might want to climb up into our vessel and eat us. Whew, at least we still got that, eh? Okay. We're doing okay. We're doing alright. Moving right along. You, my friend, are destined for greater things. You are going here. The problem is how do we do it? That might work. Let's try it out. And it did pose a severe issue. Um, so at this point, I pretty much just decided to mess around a little bit and um, test out some orbits, test out some angles, see how much range I had on my lander, and uh, play around as well with a transit orbit for my spaceship just to see how much fuel that would consume. The idea being is that I just wanted to get a rough idea of what was going on here, but this entire time I was just messing around. Uh, because I knew that I was going to revert back to the save I had when I was up in orbit. And after a little bit of a burn here, just to uh, adjust ourselves out ever so slightly, um, this is with the spaceship, if I remember correctly. Again, just testing out uh, what, my, what the transfer would actually be, how much fuel I would consume doing it. I was to transfer this way. In the end, I don't wind up doing this, but it was a, a worthwhile test, I think, just to just to see how this would all play out. Um, anyway, so burning, 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 and then I got to set up some notes and stuff so I can actually get over to Ike with the spaceship. But yeah, um, it was a little bit unfortunate how this all worked out. Um, I shouldn't have gone into a polar orbit at all. Um, that presents a much bigger problem later on down the line. Um, and it certainly presents a problem right now because transferring over to Ike itself requires pretty good timing. Although, I do like this maneuver. Um, just the way that it all kind of worked itself out. And I'm burning right now to get into it. But you can see the completely wonky orbit that I have to create to actually get captured. I'm more or less waiting while Ike goes around and does a complete rotation around uh, Duna for me to be able to uh, to approach it here, which I, I think is pretty fun. The actual way that this orbit plays itself out is pretty cool. Um, anyway, I, I didn't do this properly. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff. I mean, you saw when I was actually coming in and approaching um, the planet, the arrow breaking there was just... just bad. And the fact that I set myself into a polar orbit, while it is pretty good uh, to be in a polar orbit if you want to be able to land just about anywhere, considering that I only had one target, it wasn't really much of a point in me doing that. 
Still, a polar orbit could have worked. Um, I should have had a lot more fuel, mind you. And here we come on another burn. <laughs> Duna's peeking its way out from behind Ike. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I guess a polar orbit wasn't that big of a deal. It was the way that I got into it, the amount of fuel that I had to use to get into the orbit. Um, and I made a few more mistakes as well later on in this video, which I guess I'll gloss over quickly when we get to them. But, uh, long story short, the reason why I'm dubbing over pretty much all of my footage at this point is because I wasn't saying anything. I was thoroughly frustrated with the way that everything had panned out at this point, but then later on, just the fact that I had to redo everything again was rather frustrating as well. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to see the awesomeness that I was planning on getting to, because I never actually do land all that close to where I wanted to go. Um, KerbalMaps.com is a great resource, and I'm not bashing it at all. Uh, it gave me everything that I needed, but I wasn't reading the map very well, and as a result, I was, I think, about 20 kilometers off of where I needed to be, more or less. Anyway, now we're switched back over. I've reloaded from my save, um, as you can obviously tell, and I'm just moving away my Duna lander here, setting up more or less the same kind of a... Kind of a landing that I was before, although I had to be a little bit more severe about my adjustments. Um, and I'm doing some science on the way down as well. Just figured, why not? Um, getting myself set up. I think my chutes have been deployed a long time now. And this time I don't rip off all the bottom chutes, which is nice. I don't really have to use any, um, any rocket propulsion to land myself. So anyway, I get that down and uh, go ahead and do a little bit more science, get all the other science done, and I'm also repacking all the shoots at this point. Not that it really matters, I guess, um, but, you know, why not, really? Um, yeah, so that was more or less that, got all of that done, and uh, we're good to leave our buddy Bob behind. I think that's Bob, anyway. Um, then we go back to our uh, lander for Ike. I guess I should also mention that I actually renamed them um, to the Ike Lander and the Duna Lander, and that I reclassified them as actual landers as opposed to ships, just to distinguish them and make them a bit easier to find. Um, and again, here we're just setting up another maneuver. Um, just get us out a little bit first, and then we're going to set up a secondary maneuver afterwards, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, more or less just to get us at least a reasonable distance out, and then we can make final course corrections after that um, to get ourselves bang on with an encounter with Ike, which wasn't all that complicated, um, and fortunately it still left us with a fair amount of fuel in the end from what I remember. But anyway, burning, 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 getting ourselves out to that target Apo apps that we've got out there, and yep. That's about as good as it needs to be. Um, so let's set up another maneuver uh, somewhere over uh, there, I guess, back on the peri apps again. And just trying to adjust this out so that we can actually get ourselves a decent encounter here and do some readjustments. Yeah, um, so anyway, we make our way over to Ike and burn here to get that encounter set up. That's pretty pretty good one, I guess. Actually, I just decided to fail that one out and try again. This looked like a bit better of an encounter, so uh, we go ahead and burn here once more, adjust ourselves out, and yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, looking back, because I'm looking back after having done a lot more in this uh, little Duna series, and there are a lot of things that I could have done better. The approach um, and the arrow breaking at Duna could have been done a lot better, but also just general planning stuff. Um, ship design is one thing that I was really considering of late. Um, these ideas of having these landers on the outside, like side-mounted landers, just doesn't work because, as you saw before, um, because you have them side-mounted, there's a misbalancing uh, of the weight. And so you can't use the ship to transfer over to another moon and drop off another lander. So I'm thinking of setting something up. And here we go, just burning to get myself captured. Um, I was thinking of setting something up where you'd have landers kind of built onto the fuselage itself, like in line with the, the main fuselage of the ship, with the command pod on top of everything. 
for the ship, and then the landers beneath, and then the fuel supply and the engines and whatnot else below. Um, and in doing so, when you arrive and you get into a captured orbit, what you can do is you can detach the command pod and RCS out your lander, and then reattach the command pod to the ship, use your lander, transfer to another moon, pull out another lander, and uh, drop that off where you need and just keep on going as many times as you'd like. And it's just a really long stack that gets more and more maneuverable as time goes on. At least that's the theory that I've been working with. I haven't actually tried any designs out yet. But um, anyway, we are at Ike, captured, and I'm just dropping the periaps down a little bit so I actually have um, a suborbital trajectory. And then we zoom in. And now you can actually see my landing here. Uh, which, you know, is a landing. I mean, if you've seen a landing on the moon, it's pretty much the same idea here. So, at a decent altitude, getting everything set. And this is Bob Kerbin, so I guess we left Bill on Duna. Anyway, Bob is uh, coming down. Nice and gentle, nice and easy. Doing a little bit of science while he's up there. Um, in orbit, flying over Ike. Because we want to get as much science as we can out of this mission. And so... He does his science and cut the engines really quickly just so he can do an EVA report, head back in, we'll do a crew report as well, um, although I think in the end I wind up ditching the EVA and the crew report, um, and I'll probably do those later from the ship itself just because I can't transmit them so I can only keep one copy if I remember right. At any rate, it doesn't matter. The point is we're about to do the rest of the descent down to Ike. Um, Another thing is that I should have been making custom-built landers, as well as them being in line, it would have been nice to have custom-built ones uh, with only the science that I need, not only to save on weight, but just purely from, I guess, a mission planning and an aesthetic standpoint, it would have been nice to have the appropriate gear for what you were doing, because there's no point in having, um, there's no point in having parachutes on this particular lander, it doesn't need it, there's no atmosphere to use them in, so why even bother? Anyway, zoom on down, here we come to the surface of Ike, um, just gently killing off my uh, lateral motion here, nice little burn there on the side just to kill it a little bit more, and touch down at about three and a half meters per second, which is pretty darn good. Anyway, we've got some surface stuff to do here, so we'll just whip through this and deploy things and get ladders out and do some more science and EVA and all that good stuff. Um, and then I come to my next mistake pretty soon. Whee! Jumping off the ship. And a bounce. Um, yeah, so we take a surface sample, and once we get back to the ship, you will see my next mistake that uh, has caused me only grief uh, later on in these videos. But, um, yeah, pretty much what happens in a few moments. Oh, here we go. My silly flag. Because we're on Ike, cake the baby? Don't cake the baby. Because I'm on Ike, and I figured making an old South Park reference would be hilarious. I leave that to the viewers to decide if that is in fact the case, although I have my doubts. Anyway, we uh, get back into the ship, lock everything up, and launch. Um, launch off in one direction, and switch over to map really quick just to see which way I'm actually going. Realize that I'm not going the way that I necessarily want to, so flip back over the other way. Uh, any second now. And we keep on burning. Now, the burn that I had to make to actually get back into orbit was a little bit fun, and you'll see that in just a few moments, but um, I shouldn't be burning at all at this point. I really should have left this lander on Ike so that I could set up an orbit preferential to the way that my ship eventually comes over um, and rendezvous with Ike itself, just to, you know, save the fuel and whatnot. Um, so fortunately, I still have some fuel on this thing, and uh, I'll be able later on in the videos to make the correction that I need. I haven't actually finished this mission yet, um, so I'm hoping I still have enough fuel to be able to do make all this happen. It's looking like I will, though, so I'm not all that terrifically concerned. Anyway, just a final little look at the ship, um, making sure that I haven't forgotten to do any science experiments. 
uh, just confirming all of that and making sure um, decided I'd bring on board all the science experiments now just to get them out of the way and uh, be ready so that when my spaceship comes over I can just bring my Kerbal over, grab all the science out of the capsule, and be ready to rock and roll. But that's pretty much the entire video right there. Um, we managed to land our two landers, do our science, but I still need to send a rover over to my lander on Duna. Because I have that surprise still planned, and I want to go over to it nonetheless. Even though all the science has been gotten, um, I still want to be able to show off this little special area that I found on the surface of Duna. And uh, I'll probably be doing some more of those later on in the series, different ones around the solar system. But for now, that's all. Goodbye from Duna.